Here's May. Good evening. This is May Brussel in Carmel, California. It's tape number 496, and it's June the 7th, 1981. I'm going to continue with part two of that scandal that is taking place in Italy. It's an international scandal. It not only involves the Italian government, but the United States government. And most of the program for the next four or five weeks will delve in to this story, just as I spent very many weeks after the Watergate arrest. We almost have an anniversary of the Watergate next week. It took nine months before the real meaning of Watergate began to emerge, and the groundwork is set here for some tremendous scandals, murder investigations, banking payoffs. Every kind of a crime that is possible to be committed is linked not only to the Italian government, but it has its counterparts in the United States, and I'll go into those at length. Before I do that, there are many people sending me articles and keeping me posted on events. And in front of my desk, I have files on approximately 36 important subjects that I do not want to spend time on because I want to get to the Italian scandal. I'll just briefly run them down, or maybe one or two a minute, just as fast as I can, and let you know that I'm putting material together on them but I will, I'm going to put them off for another day. Of course, there's the assassination attempt on the Pope and what Mohammed Aja is saying or isn't saying in the investigation in Rome. I want to update the John Hinckley story and the attempt of the FBI to cover the assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan and the shooting of other people in Washington, D.C. They're limiting it now to whether he nursed off the right breast or the left breast of his mother or whether he talked early or walked early, and they're going to a psychological profile, diverting away from the John Hinckley Sr. investments, Vanderbilt Oil, Vanderbilt Energy, World Vision, and the CIA connections to Guatemala, Nigeria, and so forth. Jack Anderson had an article this week, Project Paperclip, another Nazi spy in the United States. I'm always interested when he leaks out the paperclip stories. I want to go into the Bolivian government and lengthen the struggle they're having. Uh, the California troops uh, recently up in Northern California that were discovered during war games. The only difference this time is that they are Arabians practicing in California. Uh, they're doing their terrorist operations and using the California parks and so forth for war games. I'll update soon the Harold Smith story and the Wells Fargo scandal that I did many broadcasts on. Ted Chirac was arrested in Los Angeles on uh, some charges. Uh, he made the movie The Second Gun and called me hysterically and feels that he's been framed. He did extensive work on the Robert Kennedy assassination. A Dallas company has purchased the Cobra uh, training, the terrorist training center for Mitchell Werbel in Georgia. He has various camps around the country for working with silencers and private paramilitary operators that go all over the world. I want to go into the Dallas connections of that and General Haig's operation. Now he's got more links. At the time of Watergate, that was an excuse for uh, the plumbers, and I want to go into the Haig and the leaks and the plumber connections and how he'll try again to get his secret teams to plug what he calls the leaks. The headlines are all full of Haig, 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 three times on one paper this week. New York Times Sunday Magazine section has Alexander Haig, the embattled Secretary of State, and he's trying a new image. And now he's altering his course on when he'll speak with the Russians on nuclear arms, bringing it down to September instead of December because of events I'll bring up coming out in Italy at this time. There's a lawsuit against the House Assassination Committee and their secrecy investigating the John Kennedy assassination, the Martin Luther King assassination. And I want to go at length into the Kuwait oil investments in the United States, $7 billion in securities and arms and weapons plants in the United States. Carlos Marcello's was conv Marcello was convicted this week. He's the mob boss who was named by G. Robert Blakey and others as having a role. And we know he did with David Ferry and uh, Clay Shaw in the Kennedy assassination. He was indicted on other charges than being part of the assassination teams. And Santos Traffic County... Uh, Marcello was convicted, and Santo Traficani, his co-partner, was indicted on a long-time investigation of mob in Florida. Now, the conviction of Marcello and the indictment of Traficanda and 16 other mobsters in Florida will have repercussions and murders and other activities to silence the people that they worked with. These are two of the biggest agents of the CIA that were employed by the intelligence community and are also crime figures. And one, as I say, is convicted, the other indicted, which is a major step 
of the powers that be in Washington that seem to think they can handle the mob at this time. I want to update the Mengele's story, Joseph Mengele's in Westchester, the George Moscone uh, expose that came out this week on his efforts to uh, reveal police investigations and crimes in San Francisco, and then how he was killed by a San Francisco policeman, Dan White, working with Diana Feinstein. I want to update the Jonestown Moscone connections to the San Francisco Police Department. In the missing millions, there was seven million gone from Crocker Bank this week. I want to update the twenty million from Chase Manhattan. There's one million a day missing from the New Mexico oil uh, linked to the Indian Affairs. Five hundred million missing between Dade County and Venezuela. Another thirty million missing between Florida and a Tennessee Christian church group under a pyramid scam that I didn't have time to go into yet. We'll update the Nixon Watergate story. Um, Richard Nixon's tapes are now revealing new crimes. This was in the uh, Houston Post. Uh, somebody who takes the paper asked me, will they have to do with Haig, the murder of Jagger Hoover, Dorothy Hunt, the shooting of George Wallace, or the murder of Mary Jo Kopechny? Hanging over uh, Haig and Nixon at the, on the anniversary of Watergate just a few years ago are new tapes coming out on new crimes in the White House. Uh, there's another long article on a Nazi double agent working dur during World War II with both the Gestapo and the CIA. And I want to update stories of Poland and Mr. Walesa. He wants out now. The leader of the Solidarity wants to retire to be with his family and friends. And I think his switch in private life has to do again with the shooting of the Pope and with the Italian scandal that I'll get into. James Earl Ray was almost murdered this week, and uh, he's the man charged with killing Martin Luther King. He's soon to be released from jail, but now they'll have him in solitary, and he was stabbed 22 times. The LAPD wants to limit Sir Han's ability to leave the country. He has served his time, gotten a college degree, and they decided that uh, Mr. Vandy Camp, the L.A. officials, that maybe they won't let Sir Han be released after they promised him that. Um, I want to go into Vernon Walters. He's a CIA agent, a general, who's been appointed by Ronald Reagan as a roving ambassador. Uh, this is an interesting point because Walters was one of the top officials of the CIA to cover up the Watergate. And Watergate is spilling in Italy right now with its links to the United States. So Ronald Reagan quickly had to appoint Mr. Vernon Walters as the roving ambassador. There's a wonderful book on Walters. He's covered every base of the Cold War since the end of World War II, and it's important that he be put into this team now to rove around and uh, keep the lid on this scandal that's brewing in Italy that should come to our shores. And then I will do at length in the next few weeks the murder of Roger Wheeler. He's the fellow with the uh, computer expert, the communications in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He covered all kinds of bases, Gulf Oil, Standard Oil of Ohio, his highlight, Monopoly in Florida with organized crime and the Lansky connections, dog racing, his attempt to purchase the Landmark Hotel in Vegas, his oil connections in Tulsa, his dummy fronts. He's a conduit of money siphoned in and out, similar to the Hinckley family. Um, he's got dummy fronts, uh, assets that pass through them. He's got companies with no assets. He seems to be a multi-multi-millionaire whose doors are open to millions of dollars of CIA money that's funneled and washed with oil money, um, blue chip stocks, organized crime, the FBI that he works closely with. And uh, it would be a hard one to figure out who murdered him because you could figure from reading the news accounts, particularly the New York Times, June the 1st, uh, this last week, has a long story about him. So you can choose one of 40 motives for why he was gunned down at the golf course. I have some more important trials, like the Russell Little trial, the SLA uh, member who was acquitted this week of shooting Dr. Marcus Foster. He was on the stand saying he didn't know the SLA. And then the day after he was acquitted, he had a press conference from Vacaville and said, well, yes, he really did know the SLA, and he also knew they were going to do kidnapping. The kidnapping was Patty Hearst, and when he was with them, they were bragging about killing a doc, uh, Dr. Marcus Foster, and he was part of that SLA for a year and a half before the killing and the kidnapping happened, but the jury acquitted him. I took a lot of notes on that trial, but I'm going to put aside each one of these should really, in true justice, be given an hour alone. They're important stories, but I am going to push them away now. To get on to what I think is the most important story going on, and that is the Italian scandal. 
Now, the way I study these things is to take the chronology and try to make sense of what has been going on from the time Ronald Reagan was um, put into office as president of the United States. We've seen the president of Bangladesh murdered, the president of Ecuador murdered, the attempted murder of President Reagan, the attempted murder of the Pope, the attempted coup in Spain to remove the monarchy. There's a common denominator running through these events, and I'm putting them in chronological order and also uh, not only the time frame, but the people they're affecting and also the past tapes that I've done on the predictions that Pope John Paul II was in imminent trouble and also the belief that the Reagan administration would or could fall because of the links to the Wells Fargo Bank and the Nugent Hand Bank just as Richard Nixon's administration fell after his election in 1972. Uh, going slowly now to the chronology of these events, because that is important to understand, Reagan was uh, made president of the United States and took the oath of office in January. Now, in February, was an attempted coup by the Nazi party with links to Argentine to overthrow the monarchy in Spain, and the coup fell. The uh, Spanish monarchy were furious. They blamed the United States and Alexander Haig for foreknowledge of it and for their approval of putting this uh, military junta into power. And they've been angry ever since. And also Pope John Paul II had foreknowledge of this coup. In February, the same time as that coup, the Pope issued that and repeated the canon 2336 of the church, evidently getting wind of some inner secret governments that have been rumbling that he knows full well about in Italy. And he ordered, again, the excommunication of members of the Catholic Church if they were part of the Masons. Now, he knows that a good part of the 550 lodges in Italy of the Masons are Catholics, but I think he had wind of something coming up in February that he made very strong uh, warning in, in February that they would be excommunicated if they were a Mason. Now, March the 13th, after that, the Wall Street Journal had an article that Michael Sendona, present in a American jail for losing uh, $45 million from the Franklin National Bank, in addition to his Italian banks collapsing, was funding the Christian Democratic Party in Italy for $11 million. Sendona is supposed to be broke. He's languishing in American jail. He was flown to Germany and Italy for a while before he was brought back for his trial. But Wall Street Journal reported in March that he had sent $11 million to the Christian Democratic Party, which is now collapsing in Italy. Now, also in March, March 30th, and this is a big turning point, there was an arrest in Germany of some top Nazis, and uh, they got wind of a secret link of the Nazis to countries that are now being affected in the news, specifically P Spain. Italy, Germany, the United States, and Canada. And this story broke about the Nazis and their over international links. And it was in the Houston Post. Again, I had it from the Houston Post. And the police in Bonn, Germany, went into 450 homes in March, broke in, and got documents on the worldwide Nazi connections that uh, have not, the contents have not been revealed, the weapons, the amount of weapons they had have been revealed, but this was a big find in Germany, these particular uh, homes that they went into, and that is a lot of homes linked to the countries that are affected now, Spain, Italy, Germany, where Aja came from, the man that shot the Pope, and where the banking money was for the Turkish Nazis, and also linked to the United States and Canada. And March 17th, Mr. Forlani, who's the head of the Christian Democratic Party, the Prime Minister got a hold of a list in the home of Mr. Jelly, G-E-L-L-I, of uh, the scandal that is breaking loose now. The important thing is that he held on to that list from March 17th until May 24th when the scandal began to be exposed. He held it for that time limit, and the question is why he held it. He went into the home of Mr. Jelly. They were investigating... Michael Sendona, a member of the Vatican investment team linked to organized crime, 
uh, integrally related to the Republican Party in the United States, to Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan. Um, they had all kinds of documents in their hands March 17th, and they did not reveal them until just uh, May 24th, and the list and the charges became uh, evident, and uh, Mr. Forlani uh, presented those. But after he got this list and went into Mr. Jelly's home, uh, that was March 17th, on March the 30th, Ronald Reagan was shot in the United States. Now, there are very many names in this list that link to NATO, to Alexander Haig, and to the people that worked with the Reagan administration. So just about a few days or weeks after this list was available for the Italian police and the government, Ronald Reagan was shot in the United States. He was shot by a member of the Nazis, this John Hinckley Jr., who has traveled with Nazis in St. Louis and Chicago, uh, corresponded with them in North Carolina, in California, in Colorado, with the far-right-wing group. And just as the Nazis attempted a coup and failed in Spain, the Nazi uh, uh, henchman, this John Hinckley Jr., is being protected from all kinds of investigations and interviews, tried and he failed to shoot Ronald Reagan, even though the bullet came one inch to the heart. Now, right after the assassination attempt on Reagan, uh, Alexander Haig went to Italy, and there was a NATO meeting from May the 3rd to the 7th. This is before the scandals broke, and Haig was meeting with the very people, and I'll go into the details, whose names were to come out in the scandals right now, and he was meeting with them in Italy, and he was meeting with the Pope, who then would be shot one week later, May the 13th. So two months after Reagan was in office, a man, again, a, a part of the worldwide Nazi organization, a ja linked to the terrorists with banking in West Germany, with international links to 17 countries, uh, and his organization has ties to Germany, the Netherlands, Italy, Spain, He's been in Palermo and had uh, protection by Interpol and the international police. On May the 13th, the Pope was shot, and uh, Aja was taken into custody. Now, something forced the Italian government to expose the scandal May the 24th. Now, what happened between May 13th and May 24th, I don't know. But in those 11 days, it's very possible that Aja is talking that he is breaking stories that the Italian government has sat on for a long time. Prime Minister Arnaldo Foriano has been accused of holding back the evidence of the scandal for a long time. This was in the New York Times. And the opposition members of Parliament asked him why he held this back. But in the interim that he held back the evidence of the scandal, uh, the President of the United States was shot, the Pope was shot, and then the scandal opened up full bloom. The Guardian, uh, a British newspaper with a good writer, George Armstrong, described the secret societies in Italy, the Masons, the Order of February 1981, two months before the Pope was shot, that the Vatican warned about excommunication if Roman Catholics were a member of this secret society. Now, the question was brought up in the New York Times, why did they hold this back? If they knew on March the 17th and the information was available, what were they hiding? They were hiding, as I mentioned briefly last week, cabinet ministers of the Christian Democratic Party that were involved in a secret society, uh, under secretaries of the government, 30 members of the parliament, 170 top military officers are involved, the foreign ministers of the highest rank, civil servants, public officials, industrialists, university professors, policemen, journalists, TV, newspapers, secret service, the foreign trade minister, the labor minister, the finance police officials. Now, the Nazi coup failed in Spain in February, and Nazi Hinckley failed in March with the Reagan shooting, and Nazi Aja failed in the Pope shooting in May. But the links of these as these attempts go to Argentine. They go to secret CIA organizations linked with Nazis, uh, the office of Edward Bennett Williams that works with Richard Helms, John Connolly, and the Hinckley family. So that in the interim, 
between the time that they knew about this scandal, the failure of the Spanish coup, uh, there's been other attempts that have not been successful, and maybe the reason they have not been successful is that the forces of evil have gone far enough, and maybe something is stopping those bullets from flying around. The international right-wing web that was uncovered, described in the Houston Post, uh, talks about the worldwide connections. This, as I say, was exposed March the 30th. It goes into West Germany and a diary found uh, by a man named Manfred Roder. It was seized. And in this diary are tens of thousands of pieces of Nazi literature uh, linked to the United States, linked to Canada, and also linked to Lebanon, where the Nazis trained for military training in a guerrilla camp. I said that when Mark David Chapman shot John Lennon the way he did, that his trip to Lebanon was one, Lebanon was one of the places where he could be trained to kill John Lennon. And the Nazi group from Germany that uh, had their information released through diaries and documents in 450 homes talks about their special tr military training in Lebanon. The web of the right wing uh, goes through France, Italy, Spain, and the United States. And when the police swept into these 450 homes, not only did they find weapons, but I believe that that March 30th uh, article uh, was an event that took place a week or two weeks before. And at the time that that story broke was when Ronald Reagan was shot in the United States. Now, to understand Propaganda Dewey, they call that Propaganda 2 or P2 scandal in Italy. Uh, they asked a question, a journalist asked in either the New York Times or Washington Post, what is P1 if P uh, Dewey is Propaganda 2? Well, P1 is the Permindex organization, I believe, that was founded, uh, allegedly it was established in Rome in 1961. From the end of World War II, 1945 until 1961, there were other rightist organizations. But by 1960-61, Centro Mondial Commercial was set up, and it had people like Clay Shaw, Carlos Marcello from New Orleans, David Ferry. It was an assassination team uh, known as Permindex to kill heads of states in countries all over the world if they didn't like their politics or the way they were thinking. For people that don't have the information on Permindex, you can get the Torbit document. It's available, and I'll give you the address later where you can order that. But uh, there's another book, Hard to Get, by Paris Flamon called The Kennedy Conspiracy. This came out in 1968, Meredith Press. And he goes into detail about November 14th, 1959, how Permindex was formed. And it was an Italian-American hotel corporation and it goes into the banks, the Banco Nacional del Lavoro. Now, that bank in Italy that was part of Permindex and the assassination team that attempted to kill Charles de Gaulle but killed John Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King, and hundreds of others, this Banco Nacional del Lavoro is also involved in the scandal taking place in Rome now with Mr. Gelli, with his links to Franco, to Hitler, to Mussolini, to Juan Perón, and then back to Italy. He was sent back to Italy, and he took over when Permindex uh, moved out of the country after their exposure when the Torbett document came out. But Centro Mondial Commercial was founded in 1961. The Christian Democratic uh, Deputy Marie Saravallo was the head of it, and there's interlocking names and links to the Torbett document described in the Kennedy conspiracy by Flamond and the scandals going on now. Now, the scandal going on in Italy is that the conditions were set to kill any person or overthrow any government and plan coup d'etat in any state or country that they felt was going left. Uh, it was up to them to define what was left and the secret society that swore allegiance to Adolf Hitler a group of Nazis down in South America with their headquarters there and in Madrid and in Rome, Italy, have had a very tight-knit society that have worked together since the end of World War II. Um, there's an article in the New York Times by Henry Tanner, a good writer carrying this story now, and he asked the question about why the scandal broke at this time. He said the propaganda 
Due, this scandal, the P2, broke at a time when the police in Italy were not specifically looking for it, but they were searching for the accomplices of Michael Sindona, a convicted financier who is in the United States serving a 25-year sentence for the bank failure in New York. And when they went to Mr. Jelly's house, Licio Jelly's house, to find information on Sindona, that's when they found a list of 952 citizens in Italy, politicians, generals, NATO officers, and so forth, that were linked not only to Sindona, but to a government uh, behind a government described as that dark gray third government as against a two-party system which exists to put in fascism whenever uh, they feel that they can swing it and get away with it. Now, they were going into this house to look for information on Sedona, and I'm not going to give you all the background that I have on Sedona, but I'm going to refer to a few tapes that I have been doing on this program on KLRB and other stations uh, just to show you how important Michael Sedona was. I knew he was a very important figure and did many, many broadcasts and references to him. So it's very important to know that the Italian scandal broke because they were looking to Sindona's connections in Italy and his bank failures and his money operations. November the 17th, 1978, that was almost three years ago, tape 363, broadcast 363, I talked about the su succession of popes, the involvement of John Paul II, with his links to uh, Montini, Secretary of Vatican, who ca became Pope Paul VI, the politics of the Vatican, the murder of John Paul I, the poison pope, and the links of the Masons, Terence Cook, the uh, Catholic uh, official in Washington, Washington, in New York City, and the links, I mentioned Terence Cook, and American Catholics that were involved in a scandal that I knew would burst later. A week later, on tape 364, I talked about the links of Pope John Paul II to the Milan Mafia, and that's what is coming down now in the news in Italy. There are links to Nazis in Argentina, and this is coming down with Mr. Jelly's group in dual citizenship in Argentina. The links of Montini and Sendona and their uh, arrangements with the United States Army and Vatican finances and the CIA and Nazis. I was talking about that three years ago on broadcast 408. This is September 28, 1978. I was uh, 79, rather. I was linking Pope Paul II to various criminal elements with the FBI in New Jersey. $20 million missing, and he Pope called off the investigation. It was American money that was missing. The $45 million that Sendona had taken out of the Franklin National Bank when it closed up. Another $46 million the Vatican lost is linked to Sendona and links of the United States to the money washings and scandals and, at that time, the disappearance of Sendona, who now, it turns out, was with Mr. Jelly, his long friend. October the 5th, 79, I was talking about uh, El Gorilla, the financier, the head of the bank uh, and bodyguard of the Pope, who is from Chicago, who uh, takes care of the money and the treasury of the Vatican and the links of the Vatican to the CIA, Chicago money and mob connections. On uh, October 1979, tape 411, I was talking about uh, Pope John Paul II's background to the Nazis in Argentina, to I.G. Farben, his refusal to recognize Israel and his Auschwitz background. And November the 9th, 79, I was talking about the organized crime connections and said on broadcast 414 that the Pope is in deep trouble. Pope John Paul II is in deep trouble because his, of his uh, links to these various scandals that were coming down, underworld money, and that that week the Vatican was missing $18 million, a deficit with no cash, and Sedona had been seized in New York. Uh, he had tried to escape and then was picked up again. So I was on to the Sedona missing money, the mob money, and was saying a year and a half ago that the Pope was in deep trouble because of his connections to these people. I'll take a one-minute break, and we'll go back into the interlocking links of both the Reagan administration and the Pope in the Vatican to the scandal that's coming out in Italy right now. 
This concludes the first half of World Watchers International with Mae Brussel. We will return with the second half after a brief pause. Uh, many of you listeners who are new to my line of thinking or new to thinking about these events, to remember the dates or the names of all the parties involved, you can send me a self-addressed stamped envelope to Box 22511, and I'll enclose a sheet of bibliography of sources of information or list of past tapes on these subjects. But I just want to make the point that in the past year and a half, I have seen the Republican Party, particularly the Nixon-Regan gang that would be in power, linked to these scandals of missing millions and uh, mob money and hit teams and assassination teams and uh, can find reason why Ronald Reagan and the Pope were shot at almost within uh, 60 days of each other. It, the point is if they survive, they get the message and they're not going to talk about their assailant. And I've referred to that head in the bed of the uh, Godfather uh, when he sees the horse's head there. He doesn't call the police right away and tell about his buddy who put the horse's head in his bed, and he doesn't uh, drop out of the mafia. What the mafia boss does when he gets that kind of message is to shut up, because the point is to tell him to shut up. And he praises his assailants and looks the other way. And I don't expect anything of Ronald Reagan or the Pope to bring any of these truths out. But there are other factors, the Italian government, that are bringing the stories out now, and we'll make some of these connections. As a matter of fact, there was an article uh, that I'll quote directly from one of the newspapers this week that said that Mr. Gelli's regime and his uh, secret party so far has been accused of everything except the shooting of the Pope, and that may come later. So there are people writing about this that can see this happening. Now, in February the 1st, this was just several months ago, on KLRB tape broadcast number 478, I talked about the jailbreak attempt again in New York City of Michael Sendona, Michelle Sendona. He was on the roof of the correction center with Robert Weiler, a well-known murderer from the mob, one of the largest drug dealers, and I believe that they were not only trying to get Weiler out, but uh, Sendona, and that didn't work. But Sendona, at that point... Uh, tried to reveal parts of his past, and he talked about a trip to Frankfurt and to Vienna, and uh, this is the home again of Aja, who shot the Pope later, Frankfurt, Germany, and Vienna, where the uh, weapon was supposed to have come from, by way of Belgium to Switzerland to Vienna. Now, April the 4th, 1980, uh, tape 435, just a year and a few months ago, I had a broadcast titled, Two Men Who Could Make History Jump a Little, with either blackmail or bullets. That was a year ago and a month and a half. And I mentioned one of the two men was Michael Sendona, the Vatican financier, who arranged his, his fake kidnapping at the time of his trial so that he could tie up some loose ends in Europe before he came back to jail in America. And he was ready to name top government officials pay off Vatican mob connections that involved the United States presidency and the Congress. Now, Sedona was ready to talk, and I mentioned uh, just a little over a year ago that a lot of heads could fall or a lot of scandals could come if Sedona is talking. Now, whether Sedona is talking or Mohammed Aja is talking, I know John Hinckley isn't. Um, I don't know, but something in Italy is breaking, and it's coming loud and clear. Uh, the New York Times and Washington Post and the European papers are the two that are covering it mostly at this time. A Raphael Scarpitti, a lawyer, was arrested um, just March the 19th. That was 11 days before Ronald Reagan was shot. Uh, he was investigated for receiving $11 million from Sedona. I mentioned that. There's no uh, uh, information yet about how or where Sedona was getting this money, but he was wanting favors from the Christian Democratic Party, and Mr. Scarpetti has been uh, put into jail for giving false testimony. Um, I don't know where Sedona gets his money while well, a bank collapsed in New York, and he can travel to Europe, come back to the United States, offer a lot of money for special favors, which are obviously 
to get him out of jail. I'm sure for $11 million, somebody would get him out of an American jail. You saw the way Mohammed Aja got out of the Turkish jail working with the Nazi party in Turkey in the far right. And I think what they say, he got $50,000 to spend a year and a half. Old Sedona wants some favors and he can cough up $11 million. That's pretty high class. But then he's a banker for the Vatican, so there is a difference in their backgrounds. One's a lawyer with all the end team, and the other is just a street person who is used. Now, in Mr. Jelly's house in Italy, they went for information on Sedona. And what they found in there were files, among other things, that have been used for blackmail, for physical intimidation, and for future arrests. They were very elaborate files, and they were compiled in the 1950s and 60s by the intelligence service, the armed services in Italy. You can compare those to J. Edgar Hoover's files, to LBJ's files, or Richard Nixon, or the Edward Bennett William tapes that I mentioned before that they hold. The Watergate plumbers, remember, wanted a yacht in Miami to fix up congressmen and have call houses, and they have cameras behind walls. This is an old trick that's gone on for a long time. The user organization in um, Las Vegas, they were voyeurs with cameras within almost inches of every room in the entire Las Vegas area. But in uh, Mr. Jelly's house were elaborate files by which he could control secret governments and politicians, enemies, as well as friends. He gave out money and he had money paid back to him and will go into his organization because his organization there, as I say, isn't any different than what happened or what happens in the United States. And in Watergate, we started to get a peek of it until the lid was put on it, and the lid may be put on this. But the stakes are higher now with people like General Haig pushing for World War III, pushing for a bloodbath in Central America. And there is a resistance among people around the world who are not buying his story in El Salvador or maybe in Guatemala or Nicaragua. And uh, maybe they're not going to go along with him on his aggressiveness against the Soviet Union. So Haig, because he's embroiled in this scandal, may push back a little bit. There's a very good book uh, called The Final Conclave by Malachi Martin. It was put out by Pocket Books in New York. And in that book... There's a large section on the meetings from 1969 of Michael Sindone of the Vatican with Pope Paul VI and how he took Vatican money and put it in other funds in Europe and in the United States. He took a lot of their investments that they had in Rome and Mr. Sedona uh, took the money out of the empire of the Vatican in Milan he had worked with Montini, who uh, was the secretary of the Vatican at one time. And this book tells how Montini was excommunicated. He was sent out of Rome for a while and sent to Milan. And this book describes how he found himself on a train for Milan in exile and disfavor. But after a while, he returned to Rome and brought with him what is known as the Milan Mafia. And those are the people that are caught in the scandal right now. And this goes into the money that he had taken from Mussolini's investments and put into J.P. Morgan, the Hambros Brothers, the Rothschilds of Paris, the Rome Hilton, the Pan American Building, the Watergate Complex they built and owned, the Stock Exchange in Montreal. And they also combined it with the Gambino family and organized crime and the Republican Party in the United States. The final conclave talks about Father Paul Marcinkus from Chicago. I mentioned him last week from Cicero, Illinois, the home of organized crime from Sicily into the United States in Cicero, Illinois. This is a good book that goes into transferring funds from Luxembourg and various bank shenanigans into Gulf and Western that Sendona was involved with and they own Paramount Pictures and again Gulf and Western ties into the Wells Fargo scandal that I've been talking about for a long time. I have done broadcasts on the final conclave, so if you're interested, you can get that book. I don't have to duplicate that material, but it interlocks and links with the Milan Mafia at this time with Gulf and Western. Gulf and Western sweeps in Ronald Reagan and the scandals around Reagan. So the Sendona and Jelly and the secret government in Italy 
and the Vatican finances have a web which connects, as I say, to the shooting of Regan and the shooting of the Pope at this time. And I think that the scandal was getting so big on an international level that maybe it was time to bring in their own team. Uh, Ronald Regan is an outsider, like Jimmy Carter was. He was from California, governor. He's never lived in Washington before. And George Bush of the CIA, director of the CIA, ambassador to China, and Alexander Haig have been uh, insiders from the word go. And as these scandals break, they have to stand there and guard the palace guard, uh, either push Reagan aside so that he gets the message or take over completely. And being as he was shot and weakened, he got the message. And I think that they will do everything they can to take control of what's going on. Now, uh, the Washington Post had an article this last week, May 29th, and the name of the article was Five Go on Leave. Well, leave is a military term. It said the Italian military and their top intelligence aides go on leave in the Masonic scandal. Now, this has to do with the top military men in Italy, but they are NATO men, they are intelligence men, they are working directly under Alexander Haig, who was the head of NATO, and Haig has those strong links to Argentine, the same Nazi group where Jelly has double citizenship between Italy and Argentine. The government just this last week uh, was pushing to recognize Argentine and Chile. So the NATO story involved Admiral Giovanni Teresa, the head of the Joint Chief, Chief of Staff in Italy. He's been reforced, forced to resign for 45 days. They're all taking a 45 day vacation, it's called. Uh, Teresa was appointed in January 1980 in Italy to become head of the Joint Chief of Staff. Now, January 27, 1980, Frank Nugent was murdered in Australia. And I've done broadcasts on Frank Nugent was one half of the partnership of the Nugent and Bank, totally CIA money, into heroin and Green Berets operations. The bank collapsed. The bank funded the Italian Democratic Party. William Colby, the director of the CIA in the United States, the former director, was the attorney for Frank Nugent. There are direct links to that bank in Austria and the CIA and drug money to Italy. And at the time Frank Nugent was murdered, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff was appointed, and he now is sinking in the same scandal as the head of the Italian Chief of Staff. The highest ranking officers in the Italian Armed Forces are being named among 962 others. General Giuseppe Sant'Ovito, the head of the Military Secret Service, has been forced to resign. Uh, he is similar to our Pentagon Chief, or Alexander Haig. General Chiulio Grassini, the head of the Domestic Secret Service, the commander of the Secret Intelligence Security Service of the Interior Ministry, has been forced to resign. General Orecio Giannini, commander of the Customs Police, he's in charge of 40,000 paramilitary force and border surveillance, he has been forced to step down. And Walter Pelosi, the civilian director of the Secret Service, the Office of Intelligence Coordination, the Italian government now is considering, according to the Washington Post, to suspend the military security clearances of these people who might have participated or will participate in future NATO meetings. This is what caused their voluntary stepping down for the time being. Their security clearance has been taken away. Now, this is a group of people that were planning a coup d'etat in Italy, if necessary, whose allegiance is to a third secret dark government, which is the resurgence of Nazi Germany in Italy. They work directly under Alexander Haig, the commander of NATO, and Haig is the protege of Fritz Kramer, the Nazi of Italy and Germany, who put Haig into office and catapulted his career. Kramer is in the Pentagon now. So woven into this scandal is Alexander Haig, NATO, and so forth. Now you can see the day that Ronald Reagan was shot on March the 30th, why Haig was so nervous and got up on the rostrum and said the Constitution gave him the power, I am in charge. Haig really, I believe, knew, and of course this scandal was brewing uh, earlier, 
for March 17th that the people around him, the people that worked with him, the security services, the top chiefs of staff, his Argentine connections, his Nazi connections, were embroiled in a scandal that was going to come full-blown, and he probably thought, I have to be there in charge. Being as his trip didn't work, he's softening his stand, but it's very important to realize um, how he was sweating and working out that day. People didn't understand why he stood in the White House uh, press and gave us these stories and seemed so disrupted at a time when Ronald Reagan was shot. But I'm sure that Haig had more on his mind than one back to Italy that's been brewing for a long time and which he knew was going to come down. Uh, this was March the 17th that he knew it had to come out. And March the 30th, the President of the United States is shot with the interlocking links, as I say, to the Wells Fargo, the Gulf Western, the, the Sedona connections, the Vatican, a can of worms that sweeps them all in, and they should all be swept out of office. Turkey is having trials now to sweep several hundred out of office and give them the death penalty. And I, as I've been saying on the air the last two weeks, these people really should all be out of office. The whole team going back to Watergate, to the Cold War, the General Walters and the teams that have been behind Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan should be pushed aside and the Alexander Haig's like Italy until we find out uh, their links to Argentine and their allegiance to something that is different than the Constitution of the United States. I've maintained for a long time that they're not Americans. They don't serve America. They serve every feudal society. They have created starvation, unemployment, no housing, of uh, the situation rampant for riots, frustrations, and these people are serving nobody's welfare. And when they, we get rid of them, and maybe these scandals will help clean them out, maybe Italy will get some kind of a government more socialist, such as France recently got, and maybe Margaret Thatcher will be out, and maybe people around the world will get the message of the corruption and the links of these people to many murders and assassinations. And in the weeks that come, I'll go into some of the murders that these people have uh, been linked to and are already being arrested for. Now, May the 3rd, just weeks before the Pope was shot, he was shot 10 days later, there's a picture of Alexander Haig meeting the Pope. This was in the New York Times, uh, shaking his hand in the Vatican. He's met him before. He went for that famous NATO meeting. You can imagine how secure NATO was in Rome uh, on May the 3rd when they knew since March 17th that all hell was going to break loose around them. And it involves the most famous newspaper people, the radio, television, uh, news people, the judges, the professors, the financiers. You imagine what kind of a NATO meeting was going. Now, Haig met in Rome, according to the New York Times, with Prime Minister Arnaldo Forlani, the man who knew about the scandal and has been forced to hold over, and then he, in turn, will resign. And he went with Emilia Colombo, another man who's been arrested and has been forced to resign. Uh, there was a difference of opinion with Haig and these two Italian officials at the time on various policies and arms reductions, but Haig was meeting with them, and their name specifically, this is May the 3rd, and 10 days later the Pope was shot, and by May 24th the scandal was breaking loose around them. Now, an article in the London Guardian reprinted in the Los Angeles Times this week describes Rome's scandal that I will continue doing this program and for two or three weeks to come. This is how it's described in quotes. Rome's colossal, colossal new cast of 1,000 scandal, the P2 Masonic Lodge plot, leaves many here not knowing whether to smirk or to shiver. There has never been a similar scandal in Great Britain or in North America. There is no nutshell big enough to contain a synopsis of the P2 scandal. Now that's an important um, sentence because I've been doing research 17 years and I've been on the air nine years. KLRB has an anniversary uh, this next week or so being on the air 10 years and I'm just starting my 10th year at KLRB. I started with the station when it began its first broadcasting about three months after they were on the air. And in all those times, every single week for nine years, I've been talking about the scandals that are typified and are linked to 
what is known as the P2 scandal. There is no nutshell big enough to contain the synopsis. Um, at the time of Watergate, remember the famous quotation, either Robert Haldeman or John Ehrlichman, I never did pin down or take the time to look it up where they said they couldn't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Well, that doesn't really describe it. It means they had too much scandal to get it back to cover it all up. But this is different. This is a secret team in Italy, and there is a secret team in the United States. They have their assassination teams and hitmen. We have ours, but they're not separated. And they're wrong in saying that there's never been a similar scandal. Watergate was that scandal that we could have followed to the nth degree. If we investigated the Dorothy Hunt plane crash in Chicago, the Martha Mitchell injection and cancer, the silencing of Martha, or the entire operation of the military, the news media, NATO, Hague, the Justice Department, the judges, the finance, uh, the Security Exchange Command, the financiers, the Secret Service, Division 5 of the FBI, Squad 19 of the police department and their assassination team in L.A., the Tom Charles Houston plan, if we went into all of those, we in America could have stopped a lot of the pain and suffering that was going on now since 1972, where there is more starvation and more oppression and all social benefits that ever were gained since the end of World War II are being negated. But better late than never, and as the... Uh, a newspaper said, the L.A. Times, and the article from London, it's hard to put into a nutshell what is going on in Italy. Now, they asked in the Washington Post, there was an article that said, someone has been pulling all the strings in the complex Italian world. And they asked, who is giving Lucio Jelly his orders? Now, the who of Jelly isn't any different than the who in Nixon or the who in Reagan or the who in Alexander Haig. It boils down to a person by the name of Scorzeni. Uh, there's a new book out on Scorzeni if you want to read it. He was involved with Adolf Eichmann and German Nazis and what was known as the German Brotherhood. And starting in 1939, they swore a personal oath of loyalty, bravery, and obedience to Hitler, which consisted of Scorzeni working with both Juan Perón and Franco, the same people that Mr. Jelly worked with. In J July 27th of 1948, Scorzeni, a war criminal, or should have been, escaped from prison. He went to Argentine, where Mr. Jelly had his dual allegiance. He worked and was always welcome in Madrid. Uh, there's a book called The Borman Brotherhood that describes this team. There's another one, Galen's Spy of the Century. I have about 200 books on this subject and who these people are. Uh, when the Washington Post says, who is giving Jelly his orders? It goes down to people like Otto Skorzeny, uh, who passed away recently, Hallmar Schacht, who was head of the Reich Bank with Adolf Hitler, Joseph Mengele's, a Hans Ulrich Rudell, who set up the Odessa, because this is what is showing in Italy, and we had a peek of it at Watergate. It is the spider, it is the Odessa, it is the allegiance to Adolf Hitler when the Third Reich was over to put the fourth in. These are the people that are served by our Defense Department. They have had a dual loyalty to the Constitution of the United States as against to Adolf Hitler and by the importation of Nazis through Project Paperclip and through Alan Dulles and the Central Intelligence Agency. We have been one of the 22 countries that were set up to swear allegiance to turning the world into one world under fascism. It involved Juan Perón and Nazi money, Martin Bormann. Uh, Le Monde had an article in 1976 called Gangsterism and the Extreme Right, and it goes into a, this group of fascists in Europe, and a, there are many, many articles on the subject. It goes into Walter Funk, who continued as the Minister of Economics when Holmar Schock was removed and put in prison ter temporarily as president of the Reichsbank. A Klaus Barbie, the former chief of the Gestapo, he was arrested in Lyon in 1972, and he named Scorzini as the chief of Der Spien, S-P-I-N-N-E, the spider, the Odessa. There were 100,000 fascist sympathizers at that time, and 72 known ones with sworn loyalty 
to the Fourth Reich, and it involves 22 countries, and the United States is one of them. That's why Robert Martin of the Justice Department and G. Gord Liddy, with his German-speaking, his uh, Hitler uh, mustache, his, uh, he's involved with everything about the psychology of the Nazis, and they're watching the National Archives pictures of Adolf Hitler. Uh, General Haig has been linked to these people. The Watergate plumbers were involved in that. We are one of 22 countries that swore allegiance to uh, Skorzeny and Adolf Hitler and have continued since the end of World War II. There's a strange book called The Train Robbers that goes into Skorzeny and a new biography on Skorzeny. But I like the one on the train robbers because uh, it tells about the great British train robbery and how money went from there down to Brazil and South America to fund Der Spien. In fact, the, one of the fellows involved in that recently fled to Barbados and re was returned down to Brazil. But the book of the robbers tells about using uh, bank robbery, train robbery, and money to continue funding the Nazi cause. And every week on this program, I've gone into missing millions that are going into the Fourth Reich. Now, when the Washington Post says, who is giving Jelly his orders, they come from Madrid, from Argentine. They are linked, going back to the people I've mentioned, the Walter Funk and uh, Joseph Mengele's. And when they died, there were a whole group of young Germans still able to carry on the tradition at the end of World War II and hope that they could get fascism in every country and have worked consistently with Swiss banks and um, headquarters around the world, specifically 22 main countries, and maybe they have more by now, but that was their goal to take over those 22. Now, next week, I will do more on this story because these links don't just affect Italy. As I say, they affect the United States. They affect an oath of uh, order for the Fourth Reich. They affect people that were brought to this country to take over our institutions. And what is coming out in Italy with Mr. Jelly is related to Alexander Haig and his Argentine connections and the coup in the White House, the attempted coup for him to take power at this time. The assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan or the Pope or the uh, overthrow, the attempted overthrow in Spain are not coincidental. They are relinked, related to this body of people. And while you don't get a lot in the news, and we didn't get a lot of Watergate for nine months till James McCord started talking, you will see the European press and the news stories trickling out. And what trickles, you should save and put together, because this, uh, we don't get many chances to follow these people or to bring them down. And this may be one of our last chances, and therefore you must remain educated on the subject. In the meantime, you do your homework, and I'll do mine on this, and we'll continue next week on Part 3 on the Italian scandal, which I believe is the international and the American scandal. In the meantime, this is Mae Brussel in Carmel, California, and you take care. This has been World Watchers International with noted conspiracy investigator Mae Brussel.